Welcome to Art Talk with April. I'm April Harris. I'm the artist of Inked April, located in Birmingham, Alabama. And this podcast is going to be about all things art. We'll talk about books, invite some artists to interviews, and much, much more. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art Talk with April. Today, we have Brody Walsh, who is a super interesting artist. He is multimedia. He does a lot of digital work. He's got clothes. And I mean, it's just so interesting. So welcome, Brody. Thank you for joining. His tag is Brain Mind Studios. Also, I didn't bring that up, but (laughs) there we go. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you located? And did you go to school or anything for art? So right now I live in Brooklyn in New York, Uh, possibly Queens or so in the next few weeks. Who knows? We're looking at a place. But I sort of have bounced around a little. My schooling was funny enough. I didn't ever go to art school. I went to a a tech school in Boston called Wentworth, where I studied architecture. And that's kind of my uh, professional life is architecture based. But I we had this thing where we were kind of like shared campuses with a few schools and you could kind of take classes here and there. Um, and one of those schools was mass art. So I have always been around art students and art friends for the first few years of school. Those were like, most of my friends were from there. And then I sort of started meeting people in my own class and stuff really later on and be like, Oh, okay. These are, we also get along well. <laughs> but yeah. School architecture. I have a master's degree and then uh, art just pretty much self done or friends and surroundings and stuff. Yeah. 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 So you like picked it up on your own along the way, hanging yeah. out with people and stuff. I think art was like always, it's kind of why I did architecture. Cause I always yeah. had like a love for art and a love for kind of like logical mm. problem solving. And so when I was 18, I was like, this seems like the good way to mix this. And it worked out ever since. So <laughs> What's so interesting about that is that um, I feel like, especially with the pandemic and everything, that everything is going so digital, you mm-hmm. know, and that's kind of, I, I personally feel like a really smart way to go as far as like how you're getting your work out there and sharing it with people. So um, I guess, could you tell us a little bit about like, your media and your style and your vision as far as your artwork goes? So you mentioned the pandemic and that's pretty much uh, essentially when Brain Mind was born was during COVID where like everyone, I mean, I had a lot of time alone. It was the longest I had not worked, you know, yeah, pretty much ever since I started working. And so I personally had a very like, uh, honestly, for me, my experience was pretty positive throughout it. I can't write off everyone's, there's obviously a lot of tragedy that, yeah, yeah. Came along with it. but I, I, I'd be lying if I said my experience wasn't a positive one. I, I got really lucky with like quarantining when COVID first hit. So I quarantined, I lived in California at the time. I lived in San Diego. Oh, wow. So a few of us happened to go up to my friend's mom's house who has like a few acres of land. Uh, she's a funky, cool artist, theater director. And so we stayed there, like we quarantined together for six weeks on this farm and just sort of made a ton of art and worked on the farm, like built fences and painted and planted in the garden and everything. And so like, it kind of really reawoken, like woke up this part of me that was like, just got to be only an artist for a few weeks, you know, and, and I as opposed to just doing it like after work or whatever so it was we really locked in that groove of like we were making music and we made like 45 songs and this and that we were just drawing and painting and then we went back to San Diego and it was still locked down pretty much and everything and so we were just I bought an RV and then I moved into it and we were just driving around pretty much maintaining that nomadic weird art life for like that whole year basically which was a whole big shift for me like I 
I've always been infatuated with that, but I never got to like do it, you know, <laughs> especially architecture is kind of like I graduated and I've got that nine to five job yeah. forever, essentially. And so it was a huge departure from what I'm used to. And then I was like, funny enough, it was during a meditation ceremony where I like the term brain mind kind of came to my mind. And I was like, I don't know if this is an album name or what, yeah. you know, this is like a music pseudonym. Mm. uh and then slowly it just became what it was and I was making a lot of art so then I kind of leaned into aestheticizing it as what I wanted it to be and that led me to like the Instagram is full of pretty much digital work mm. digital drawings um and then clothing and accessory yeah. design like this hat and any pretty much anything I'm wearing right now is brain mind but the Instagram yeah it's mostly digital work and then I do a lot of painting and I do a lot of drawing and sketching, but that usually will be more of a precursor to whatever gets posted. And then, yeah, just kind of made a space for myself to, I saw myself making a lot more art and I was like, I might as well make a platform for myself to yeah. share this moving forward. And it's been good for like, now that I'm back sort of getting into the groove of normal life again, it's like, I'm really glad that I did because now I have sort of a reason to like make art every day if I'm not necessarily motivated I like kind of feel like I have to because I've I'm trying to create this platform so it's been good for like self-accountability in that way <laughs> oh yeah absolutely I feel that way myself on my own like social media stuff you know they say that you're supposed to be consistent and always yeah. posting regularly and it's like kind of a little pressure to have Definitely. something to show <laughs> but it keeps me I like it because then I'll sometimes I'll have days where some days I will wake up and be like I don't have anything to post oh my <laughs> god and those days I don't I don't like that feeling because that's when it hits me as like why am I doing this you know what's my goal and then the days where I have enough I'm like really grateful we're like oh cool like maybe I would have just drawn like two things last night but I'm way more juiced up to like just draw until I fall asleep. I'll draw like five or six things. And then it's like, the more I have on deck, <laughs> the like more I can just be like, okay, cool. I have like a week's worth of drawings. I can sort of just keep stacking up and relax yeah. and stuff like that, where it's like, I try to keep it motivational as opposed to like feeling too much like a responsibility or like a something. I, I don't ever want the art to feel like a burden, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, I haven't done my homework, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, this is for me at the end of the day. So it's like, once it feels not good, good I'm like, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. That's not the goal here. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. I think I feel the same way as an artist. Do you, um, so you said that you sketch and you paint and everything, but as far as the digital stuff, what are you working in to create that? Well, I was doing my, so my girlfriend used to ask me all the time why I don't post like time lapses of my drawings and stuff. And I, I always told her, I was like, my old process, I, so I use a lot of Illustrator and Photoshop. Mm. Um, and like a lot of times I would sketch something, trace it in Illustrator, get the lines and then bring that into Photoshop to do a lot of the color. And it was just like a really I like, you know, when you're doing something and you just know there's a better way to do it, but you don't, like, it wasn't hindering me. So I was like, I'm feel fine. But it's like, I feel like if I were to do those time lapses, I was always like, someone's going to notice that I'm doing this a really dumb way. And like, <laughs> it just doesn't look cool. <laughs> but then I got in a, for Christmas of last year, my, girlfriend and a bunch of my family all like chipped in and got me an iPad and nice. it is a game changer. Yeah. Um, oh my God. Having Procreate to, to use is just, it's all in one place. It, it already does the time lapse for you if you want. Like it just has so many questions were answered and I was sort of starting to dive into a little bit of animation before that. And now it's like in the program, there's such a easy like animation guide that just sort of makes it so easy to mm -hmm. make to make the animations that I want to make like 2d simple cute stuff and yeah that's been pretty much now I don't even know if I've made a brain mind thing in photoshop 
since Christmas pretty much. Like it's just been so addicting of like, you can really bang stuff out and just like experiment a lot really quickly. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I am right there with you because I'm a graphic designer. Okay. Um, and I know all about Photoshop and Illustrator. And I can imagine like the process of transferring one to the other and then trying yeah. to fill in, you know, solid colors and stuff like that and the process and how, like you said, you feel like, okay, there's this probably, ha- there's probably an easier way to do this. Well, I was and tracing then- with the mouse for years like I literally <laughs> would draw with the mouse and now I'm drawing with the pencil again and I'm like oh my god uh, <laughs> it's like, like a miracle you're like yes this is yeah. awesome <laughs> so much better it's amazing because uh I was gonna say you know like were you drawing with the mouse or like with a yeah. tablet or not even the mouse actually it was like my trackpad just my oh, finger wow. I would literally <laughs> trade and it was just slowly I was learning to make them better and like that's why I used to trace them all in photoshop which was just a mess and then like if you look at the older brain mind stuff the lines are so wiggly and then I went to illustrator and was like oh my god I can actually stabilize these (laughs) and now in procreate I mean the brushes are endless you can you can do anything really which is sick yeah now you're gonna take off seriously it really Scott like I remember like the first few weeks it was just like done drawing drawing oh the animation drawing and then now I'm kind of like okay I get it and I can yeah relax and it's amazing to me that 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 um procreate is only like 10 bucks it's yeah. like and it does so much and then even they yeah. they just recently updated it where like they've added things to like the animation process and stuff like that and so it's kind of like holy yeah. cow like you don't even have to leave this app you could do so much it's yeah, crazy. I'm hoping because i think that they're i mean i know like it's so it's become right away like some sort of i don't know if industry standard is the right word but like it's everywhere you know like yeah. i'm seeing everyone is using it and so hopefully that just makes them because there are little things i would love to tweak about it but yeah. hopefully they'll with everyone using it they'll probably they're probably editing it non-stop every day like it'll just get better and better i'm oh, sure yeah absolutely more expensive though that's yeah it doesn't get more expensive yeah <laughs> i feel like that tends to happen once the apps get like really popular then they'll start doing like a monthly payment or something like well, that. that's what like kind of ruined it <laughs> there was a long time where in school of course they i had all my programs licensed for student use and then yeah it's like once that sweet period ended in like i don't even know 2018 probably where everything started becoming subscription based yeah it was just i was just slowly watching like my access to these programs fade away where i was like i can't pay 50 dollars a month for, yeah. for this and then 50 for this and like I, it's it's too much where like i miss the old days where you just download the program and have it and that was it yeah. probably off of like pirate bay yeah but, <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome yeah. those were the oh. golden days for back when you could actually torrent stuff Ooh. maybe i couldn't <laughs> say that but brain mind uses a uh, legal yeah <laughs> adobe creative suite that's a problem. i made uh, sure i was like i can't be i can't be doing anything sketchy i guess <laughs> This is going out to the public, Brody. You can't. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, everyone listening, use the Pirate Bay at some point. No way. No if way. you're an artist, you've probably done something yeah. of that sort to try to make it. <laughs> we, all, we all got some bootleg Photoshop on our parents' computers, yeah. and probably got a virus from LimeWire or something. So <laughs> I don't feel bad. <laughs> oh man, so. Um, I guess you sort of started recently then doing all of this. I got to say, it's really, really cool. And um, it looks like you've been doing this for years. Like you're so good at it. It seems like you've got some experience behind you as far as coming across this and um, carrying it out. Like if you ever look like even right now, I've always got at my workstation, like a paper, under my like I'll have my computer and then like a good like six inches of just paper where it'll just be full of doodles and so I've always been a drawer like I've always drawn my whole life where like 
my high school notebooks would just be no notes like just drawings like it was so, sort of like how because I did really well in high school but it was like kind of I guess like just how I learned better like if I was drawing it kind of allowed me to absorb information better and so yeah I don't know just like some little things would if you're doodling every day like I would just start to notice little things that were like becoming common that I would draw all the time you know like for no real particular reason and I was like yeah these are in like just something you love drawing we're like I don't know I, for me it was like hammers I draw a lot of hammers for some reason and I just <laughs> you like find something that's like a shape that just works with you and you're like I don't know it's whatever that is however that happens who knows but yeah I've definitely been drawing in a similar style for a long time and so it's like it was more of less of like let me start this and more of like let me create a platform to share this stuff mm -hmm. Cause at first we were Braymon clothing company. And so I was just like, I'm just going to print some shirts. Yeah. But we're interested. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll print shirts. And like, I'll be a clothing company that also posts art. And yeah. then we kind of made the shift. I made these notebooks, these oh, yeah, yeah. storytellers notebooks and they're half line, half blank. And I was like, this is really like what I want to do. Like make things that are actually going to help people make art and so yeah. I was like right we can't be a clothing company anymore and plus I was posting like mostly art anyway as opposed to mostly marketing for clothes or anything so Framine Studios came out of that where I was like okay it's early enough like now I can really open the door for myself to just sort of just be seen yeah as, as an art studio as a place where things are going to come out of and like yeah uh, kinda, a lot more broad which I, I was really into that idea yeah, and I feel like you're you're really uh, creating a very strong brand. Thank you. Yeah, that's what it helps because I stuck with the color palette pretty early. Like a lot of people ask me about that, and it's yeah. it kind of it's like I always reference my architectural background because architecture you're you're taught pretty much what my biggest takeaway at least from school was just being taught how to fully cohesively package something, which as a graphic designer, I'm sure you're oh, learning yeah, yeah. the same ideas where it's like kind of every decision has a rationale behind it. Mm -hmm. It's all connected to some continuous thread. And so yeah. that is really what I value the most out of my education is the ability to like package something. And so sort of setting up those constraints, people that may not know, like, rules and limits and constraints in art are you know even if you're just red yellow blue right away you're like okay if i have no idea in my brain i can still make like a banana an apple the ocean you know like whatever can sort of it, it gives you something to lean on if you need to and like a direction to sort of continuously go in which i really benefit from like a, a fully blank page and a blank brain is my enemy where i'll just <laughs> sit there forever and like it just won't work. <laughs> it's almost as if like, um, and I felt this way as a graphic designer too, like having those constraints where these are, these are your colors, this is your style. A lot of people feel like that's like, that takes away from creativity because then you don't have the whole world of options available to you. Yeah. But personally, I feel like it stretches your creativity to like really make you think about new things, you know? I think people that people that think that like the way that you were describing is they probably have, and to no fault of their own, they probably haven't been in that scenario. Because like once you see it, you it's just, in my opinion, it seems like a fact. Like yeah, brains are going to help creativity because it's like, okay, we can't do this, but I want something in that vein. Like, what can I, like, it's already going to get you brainstorming where you're going to be working around things where you're like, okay, like architecture. It's like, this is the plot of land. Mm -hmm. Make something in here work with these codes and these rules. And it's like yeah. very much just becomes a puzzle right away, which is where I, my, I really yeah. like to be. 
Yeah, it's like solving a puzzle, like trying to, like you're giving these pieces to work with and then come up with something clever, some something creative out of yeah. these pieces. I get it. Yeah, that's awesome. When I was young, my my goal for a while in high school was when I was sort of thinking about what I wanted to do was I leaned into the marketing world a bit where I was like sort of the same mindset of how can I, I was just always looking for a way to mix creativity and logic. Like I loved math and mm. sort of concrete things that are true. And then also I loved creativity and expressing myself. So I was like a little list of things that fit into that where marketing was one where I was like, maybe I'll make ads and, now I like kind of think about that all the time where I'm like, I'm sort of got there. But. Yeah, yeah. You're sort of going that direction because yeah. that's really, I think the the primary thing about it is that um, we all, and I was talking to another artist actually, but our work is almost like an advertisement, you know? Yeah, definitely. And there are, it's, that sometimes gets in my head too, where like, I do have moments like even though I just talked a whole talked up the whole constraints which I stand by but I I still have moments of like you know maybe if I make something that's like a total departure from the brain mind aesthetic is it worth any like should I post it should I post it on my personal you know is it does it fit and I really want brain mind to be open ended of anything creative is welcome so I do get in my own head sometimes where I'm like I believe that sentiment. And then luckily, like what I post is true to what I just naturally make anyway. So I'm not really, I'm not really sitting there ever trying to be like, what is, what looks brain mindy. It's more just like most of what I make is naturally going to fit into that mold. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I do that too. I've actually, I've kind of feel like I've got kind of a, kind of a style going and then suddenly I'll make something that is completely just off and, you know, a different direction. And I'm like, should I share this or should I, should yeah. I just keep it to myself or what, you know, like share it on some other platform that I don't really share a lot on or something. <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel for sure. We're like, <laughs> luckily, yeah, like I said, it's, it's few and far between where, where I am questioning that most of the time I'm like my natural self is yeah what it's been from the start. So that's luckily, luckily the case. <laughs> Yeah. And maybe it's just that you're like your brain is trying to figure something out and experiment with something else for just a moment, you know, and then it adds back into what you normally do. Yeah. Well, especially like we were saying with Procreate now, I mean, I have there's still so much that I have to learn in there where like sometimes I'll just open it and like not even really try to make something that I care about, just make something like I'll open like the symmetry tools or like Mm -hmm. anything sort of like that can make me make things like freely. I'll just sort of like make some, a bunch of mandalas and like see what I can come up with or like, just like literally like I'll open it and just like scribble around, erase, scribble, scribble, erase. Like some (laughs) drawings will have like different layers. That'll be like four different things before I'll erase all of it and then start the drawing. Like it's like, (laughs) such a fun space to be in for me (laughs) and it's so wild because it's see like when you open it you're like this is kind of simple you know especially compared to like anything adobe it's so complicated and then you open up procreate and you're like where is everything you know (laughs) that's what i like though i I have a big (laughs) my whole life and again especially architecture architecture has such a way of unnecessarily complicating programs and interfaces like a lot of the industry autocad in my opinion does not need to be as clunky as it is and like i use other programs where i'm like but that kind of gives it this weird elite status of like when you know it you're like it's like techie and cool but i'm like everything should be more accessible and like i've learned programs that are just as capable but way simpler of an interface and i'm like this is, I don't want to feel special just because I learned a program. Like I want everyone to be able to learn all of them. Like these are good skills to have. And so, yeah, I definitely shout out Procreate for simplifying and just keeping yeah. it sleek like that where I'm, I'm really into that idea. But then even as you like 
first open it and start working in it, you realize that there's so much more underneath oh, that you yeah. have to figure out. And I even I, I've been using it for um, probably about as long as you have, probably maybe do you, use it in, do you use it for graphic design? Do you use it in work? Um, I've been doing uh, digital paintings with it, mm-hmm. like just drawings, you know, like fantasy type drawings. And so, but I've also used it for animation and I've used it to do a lot of the like, um, like posts or quotes or things like that, where I'm like creating something that's really the only pers- purpose of it is for a graphic, you know? Yeah. Um, and I know people use it for like logo design and things like that. And I mean, you can save it as a Photoshop file and take it yeah, over to Photoshop cool. if you wanted to, you know? So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing the things that you can come up with just in this little, you know, app on your iPad is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. My, my, the two things I really want them to change are I want to be able to put things off frame without clipping them. Yeah. That's like the biggest one in my head where, especially for the animations, like if I want to make something come on screen, Mm. instead of making it like streamlined i have to like make one f- solid image of it and then sort of work back like i have to always maintain a full one you know yeah and sort of like merging layers where it'd be nice to have this sort of like this is the person or whatever the it is and then like if i sh- only show half of them i want it, the other half to still exist that's a <laughs> main part where like especially yes. when I'm <laughs> more, yeah when i'm diving into the animations like i'll be like i want to make you know, if so, if anything goes or comes from off screen, it's like I have to think ahead because if I lose it, I'm doomed. And then I have to like always save a backup layer, but make sure it's off. And that's probably the one thing where I'm always like, that, that will eventually come, I think. Yeah, more yeah. More and more people will use it and more and more people will want that. And hopefully they'll eventually add that. I'm surprised that they don't have that as an option or like something to like turn on and off if there are people out there who don't want it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because the first time I noticed that I was like, I definitely had some like, like not ruined, but like, you know, created a real big hurdle during an animation where I was like, oh no, I didn't realize this was going to (laughs) delete most of this image if I dragged it away. So (laughs) undo, undo. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Because <laughs> I did the exact same thing. I had brought in like a like a photo that I was gonna I was trying to I hadn't figured out reference images yet. So I had um where you can open up the little it the little window with an F reference image. So I was bringing a photo. I've not, I've not even done that. Yeah. It's one where you can it like opens up a little window on top of um, the procreate work area. And so you can zoom in and um, move it around the little reference image and even make the window larger and smaller and stuff like that. But you can have it off to the side so that it's not, you know, on your, on your page or in your time lapse or something like that. I do, yeah. Cause I always just, if I use an image, I, I just make it a layer and like, yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah. But when I did that, I kept trying to like move the image around so that I could draw over to the side and yeah. I would cut it off and be like, yeah. oh, you know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like I just lost half my image. <laughs> it's nice when I'm deleting things on purpose because it's, it's nice <laughs> to just be able to drag them off screen and be like, it's gone forever. But yeah, yeah definitely the small little bug that they'll they'll work on, I think. Yeah, that has. I mean, that's like. That's one of the biggest things I think with Creative Suite and Adobe is that they all have that area outside that you can kind of, you know, store things or have them, you know, yeah, still accessible. Yeah. That's yeah. What <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so what would be one of your biggest struggles um, doing all of this and creating this? um this work uh my biggest artistic struggles are I guess like honestly they all come down to like some sort of conversation with or about like my own ego in a way where like I think making brain mind really helped me in that sense where I always have made 
a lot of music and like I've yeah. always been really bad which I hear from a lot of smaller artists uh music artists of like it's kind of weird especially music it's like very uh it's very personal and stuff and like also artistic but like it's it's very attached to my name and so promoting it has always been hard for me where it's like it just kind of gets in my head ahead of like you know hey listen to this thing I made like you should really want to listen to it and like yeah no you shouldn't like I don't know <laughs> like <laughs> and so it's like always been tough and and I've seen that in other people too so having like brain mind be like if you'll notice like sometimes I'll a lot of the time I'll reference brain mind as like we we're doing something we're up to this like it helps me kind of keep it as its own non-human entity mm -hmm. and so I'm just like sharing through it which helps me where I get to sort of talking to third person in that in that way where I'm like we're doing this I don't need to like I don't necessarily need anyone to care about Brody I just want it to be its own thing so that's been nice and then similarly with relation to like my own ego it's like I have a lot of I don't know if it's really imposter syndrome but just sort of like I'll make something like a lot of times I'll make a drawing and like after the fact google it like I'll google the concept of what I just drew yeah. thinking like someone already definitely made this like the way that I just made this like I, I don't know and then I'll like I won't find anything so I'll be excited but and it's not like I've I don't know it's just sort of that where I'm always just like wondering if I'm being original enough for my own liking and other than that like actual technically my struggles have mostly come from like the business end of things where I had to like we've been I've been working on some deals and things with uh getting some product in stores and places and it's just like had to really dive in to business jargon 101 and just like mm -hmm. hired like a mentor to sort of teach me some phrasing and like best sell myself and just sort of learning to walk that line in, in that space of like I want to be myself and like young and utilize the sort of like cuteness of a young startup, but then also not give away, you know, you don't want to seem inexperienced and like get walked all over. So it's kind of like been fun in that way of like really trying to learn, just sort of enter the business world of things where I don't know anything about anything in there. So that's been cool to get a crash course sort of. And, and I still am learning a lot all the time. And it's a lot that I don't, necessarily love doing but like it gives me hope that one day maybe someone will do that stuff for me if I get the success that I want yeah really I think I think a lot of creative people feel that way they're like I hate that part of it but it's one of those things that you kind of have to do if you're going to yeah you know get somewhere with the things that you want to do you know and so, yeah, like I like the energy of it like I've I've always really liked just sort of putting myself out there in that way of like, sometimes something will happen. Uh, like maybe we're in a store and someone's like, Oh, Whoa, like how did this happen? And it's like, I just emailed a bunch of people and <laughs> hopefully it sticks, you know? And so it's like, I think just sort of, if you're down to really jump in, just sort of going for it is usually the thing that some people seem to hesitate on a bit where they're like, I, I hear a lot of like, that'd be awesome but like so do it <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah it would <laughs> yeah I think there's a lot of hesitation with people because like you said yeah. I think it has something to do with what you're saying about ego too it's like there's sort of this thing where we doubt ourselves and then we're also kind of like okay Am I, am I doing this to get more attention like for myself or am I doing something that is creative all on its own and it's, and it's valuable and worthy all on its own by itself without me. Yeah. And then you're like, well, I have to get somebody involved and to like uh, carry my products or whatever in order to give do I mean like does that give it value if it's like in a store necessarily or does it have value on its own I mean there's yeah. like so many like 
questions around where we hold the art as far as what it means to us personally. Like, is this, like, is this now? Yeah. Yeah. Social media. I mean, it's like, it's, it's a whole tricky, like everyone I'm sure gets lost in it all the time where I do, where it's like, like you just said, you know, it's like, would I, would I still be doing this if I wasn't sharing it or would I, would that person still be doing it? Like you can usually tell, I think when like, you can see the genuine, how genuine somewhat something is usually on social media, but sometimes maybe you can, I don't know. And it's like, and let alone just the ego the crushingness of it, where it's like, I can go on my phone right now and look at 300 artists way more talented than me posting stuff I would dream to make. It's like, <laughs> don't even go there, Brody. Don't even go there, man. <laughs> well, then it's like right away. I mean, that's the classic conundrum now where it's like they're them be doing that doesn't invalidate what I or anyone's doing but it's like it's easy to feel like it does where you're like why am I going to share this when this way cooler thing already exists and I'm like it's just like this sort of evil comparative zone that everyone should it's important to find a good balance with which you know I come in and out of like yeah yeah walking that line (laughs) yeah and I I mean I'm not I, I don't want if you don't want me to share your age, you don't have to share your age, but I feel like you're really young and um, you had to have grown up like in the social media. Definitely. I'm 26. Uh, Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's like, that's what's bizarre is like, I've, I've said on several occasions, like I would love to have no Instagram at all, but like, I'm also normal and fall victim to everything. We're like, personal stuff is less important in that sense but also I use it all I mean nonstop. and then nowadays it's like if I won't bring mine to grow I can't justify not having Instagram at all that's our that's my main I don't even know like business landing page in a sense and so it's pretty weird where it's like you kind of do feel trapped sometimes where it's like I don't even have the option to not have that thing (laughs) really in my opinion Yeah, I think in that, you know, like I'm, I'm actually 42. And so I'm in that um, generation where like, up to where I was like 19, 18, 19, there wasn't anything, you know? And so I kind of grew up in that time where there just wasn't any of that stuff. It never existed. And then went into college and things were starting to happen and, and start, you know, like the internet and websites and all that stuff was coming up yeah. And in my, you know, um, late twenties and thirties, it just like booming. Everybody has Facebook and Instagram and whatever it is, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, I can see it from both perspectives and it's really hard because at on one end, I feel like it's so huge for us as artists to have access to the world, you know, yeah, to definitely. be able to share it with everybody. But then at the same time, it's kind of like you said, there's so much art out there. There's so much creativity out there. It can get kind of overwhelming. You know, you're like, holy crap, there, there are so many talented people out there honestly it can get overwhelming and it can get like weirdly underwhelming where it's like you almost get a little desensitized to like you know like I like I said I could literally right now find a hundred amazing works of art in five minutes yeah it's like back in the day who knows all hundred of those might have been worthy of being in museums and now it's like it sort of raises the bar really quickly where it's like we get yeah desensitized to real like potent talent I think and that's kind of weird I'm I'm glad because I think I was I think I'm part of the last real generation of having had time I kind of feel like I'm online with with the internet like kind of I grew up as it grew up and so it didn't really become what it is now until you know I at least had my true like youth youth of like I think I was like 10 when I maybe heard about MySpace and like Back when the internet was a little more innocent, 
And like, you know, it wasn't Was so, it though? I don't know. I don't know if the internet's maybe, ever been innocent. <laughs> maybe not, but I think it was at least like, I don't think people had realized or they haven't acted on yet at that point, like what they're doing now with like, just like data farming and, and sort of like, like right now, you know, it's like we were just saying, I, I put all, so many eggs in my Instagram basket where I'm like, this is the, the place to share my work. But like, that's really putting a lot of weight. Like, that's just a company. They could wake up tomorrow and delete Instagram. And then it's like, what happens then? It's, yeah. so it's pretty like, and just, yeah, this, the classic conversations nowadays about, like I said, like data and just the corruption that's made its way into making everything so addictive like that. I think yeah. it wasn't there yet, at least like MySpace. I was just t- talking about this the other day. It seemed like awesome. MySpace was innocent. It was like you're learning a little bit of basic code and <laughs> you're like you're just sharing like a truly personalized page of yourself and it's like that was a cool idea and now it's yeah. just very I don't know, commodified I guess or oh, yeah. whatever the word is for like they sort of stripped some of the individuality from it it seems like. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because it's just, and now it's like all ads and advertising and people are selling your information and you're like, you know. Right now, I don't even like, I don't even know what what the next, I foresee some huge changes coming, whether Instagram drops off or just changes because everyone's getting pissed, including me, where it's like, my stuff is shown to like 10% of my followers Mm. and like most of what I see are ads. And it's just like, it's not really a fun, I like the chronological, if I follow you, I want to see your stuff. If I don't follow you, I don't want to see, like, simple, hopefully they bring that back. Because I've heard a lot of people complaining about it where I've never heard anyone enjoying how it is right now. Like, it's just like weird algorithm-y and I'm not seeing what I want to see and no one's seeing my stuff. And it's like, why, these people followed me and I followed them. Mm. I want to we should see each other's things all this like yeah like the simplest parts are being like messed with where I'm like why those are the parts everyone likes (laughs) it's crazy because I mean like I was just looking at it earlier today and I was like man I'm getting all these advertisements for other accounts and other profiles like you know check out their Instagram and I'm like why why am I I can't it's like I can't get to the stuff that I actually intentionally wanted to see. Yeah, literally. Yeah. I feel like they stopped showing everyone everything so that you'd like pay for ads. And then now everyone's paying for ads. So it's like all we're seeing. Like if I go on Instagram right now, it's probably one out of every three is an ad. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, this is ridiculous. Like I'm not even, I don't even scroll. Like I miss back in the day when you would scroll and it would say like, you're all caught up. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. You can't you know, do that anymore. No way. Like you went on like a camping weekend trip without your phone. You get back like that first time, like in the bathroom, you're just like, I'm going to be in here for an hour, like scrolling <laughs> and catching up on everything. <laughs> and there's an end to it where you could be like, oh, you know, like I yeah, said, all everything that happened. It was awesome. That was like a good feeling because it was like something to look forward to. It was like my catch up time. Yeah. And now it's like, that, yeah, it doesn't exist anymore because it's all jumbled up. Like, silly. I'm not. I'm not into that. Hopefully, if Instagram, if you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> they probably are listening. Honestly, <laughs> but um. So, man, we've touched on a lot of really cool stuff. That I feel like we have. I haven't talked with others about, but like one of the things that you mentioned was how Instagram, how Instagram could just you know, like tomorrow, close up shop, right? Do you have your work in another place on the internet or are you just putting it on Instagram? So I have it on our website, but I admittedly am pretty slow. Like I'm trying to figure out, I'm sure it's simple, but I, I really would like to hook up the Instagram to the website because of like, yeah, I sort of do like occasional dumps of like Mm. the last several weeks of drawings I'll upload and it's just like an ongoing feed on the one page of the website but I'm currently trying to figure out or get I don't know it just takes time to edit the website so much that like but I really want to make 
the website more art focused because it's still very much in the sort of product world of yeah. like that's where I send people to go buy things but I would like to make the website sort of more like the Instagram of like this is just a, a website you know not like a a sales site or a page for buying things like just like the brain mind site it's gonna have lots of art I want animation page I want to be more active in the blog uh just like make it more of a place to actually go instead of just the place to go to shop and so but yeah otherwise I mean I I try to keep up on like Facebook but it's hard to do it all and to the same capacity as like Instagram's the main spot I have obviously all the files and stuff on my own but like yeah Instagram is probably like a good 80% 80% of like the bulk of, you know, the sharing that is done. Yeah. I've actually had this conversation with another artist, the same artist and um, talking about um, I've noticed a lot of artists and I come to think of it. They're mostly, mostly women. And I, I hate to generalize, but mostly women, older women, And a lot of these artists are leaving Facebook and Instagram and trying to centralize everything over onto like some kind of website. And so, and the whole premise with that is like, they don't own that, like Instagram, like you said, could just, you know, stop. And so they're trying to like, have more ownership in where it's at and, you know, like have their own platform versus, you know, like putting it out on the social media places that they, they have available. So that's what I I want to do for sure. Cause then I think I can sort of also like just make it more art centric. Yeah. Like make it more of a, this is our space and this is what it looks like. And this is like welcome. And, you know, I can do more prints instead of like just, a post on Instagram, which is cool. But yeah, I mean, in, in reality, Instagram is what, like probably 10 years old and it's like, it can't last forever. So mm-hmm. something's going to replace it at some point. I mean, it replaced whatever it replaced, like I, I guess it was before they bought it and like Tumblr maybe. And like, I'm sure there was like whatever came bef- more before as, I mean, it was really the first streamlined like image sharing that I I remember and so yeah I don't know I just I feel like knowing that in the back of it's always in the back of my head where I'm like just historically I mean nothing technology doesn't last forever 10 years is pretty long to be so dominant and so I don't know people are complaining more and more like they're I think they're what a common flaw that I see in my opinion is like all these companies just are constantly changing, which they think is a good thing. But most of the time we just, I was content with Instagram years ago. I wish I didn't need any, I didn't need anything to change ever since then. Yeah. (laughs) At all. And they just keep changing. And I'm like, you think you're helping, but we were all happy. Like Twitter, I I, I go on Twitter. Like I don't really post much, but I at least like go on there usually like once a day. And it's, it's never really changed and it's awesome. It's just streamlined. It's chronological. And it's like, they've added little updates here and there, but it's like, no one was complaining. So don't, don't fix what's not broke. Yeah. Yeah. Like now I see, um, well, honestly, I think Twitter has done this, but it it just hasn't taken off. And so has LinkedIn like added on like reels and stories and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. And they're like, everybody's like trying to do the um the short video thing like yeah. so trying to compete with tiktok or something well that's what i think is i hear the biggest sort of reason for all the all the changes that instagram's making that everyone hates is like yeah they're trying to beat tiktok and it's like <laughs> they're just making they're making instagram worse by doing it so i'm just like you should just just let tiktok be what like tiktok is in my opinion I didn't see it like taking people from Instagram. They, I see yeah. them as pretty different apps and everyone had both. And yeah. now they're just like, I don't know. I think Instagram's pushing people away onto TikTok because they're just sort of turning into a worse version of it. <laughs> like, why are we going to stay while you become this 
horrible version of this well like i could just go to this one that already exists like yeah. we don't need to catch up <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Oh, that's such a great point because that's seriously what's happening. I'm like when they started um, doing all the reels and everything and it was like Instagram had their own version of like dances and oh, yeah. audio and these things that everybody's like doing, but it was the same, like everybody's doing the same things. And yeah. then you're like, okay, this is like, they're trying to be like TikTok, but this isn't varied enough. There's not enough yeah. you know, uniqueness here for me to even keep looking at this. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm not even <laughs> that big on, I don't use TikTok really. My girlfriend is always watching them and I'll like always get hooked and just like, we'll watch them together all the yeah. time. <laughs> it's like the ones, I hate to say it, the ones, the Instagram, the people that tr- are treating Instagram like TikTok are as far as I've seen, usually just like less funny and less creative. (laughs) Like they're just worse, honestly. (laughs) Or like some kids on TikTok, we will, we will pause and just be like mind blown at how creative some of these young kids are where I'm like, and I don't know if they're inventing these ideas or, I mean, there's a lot of copying on there, but still it's like, yeah, I don't know. Instagram is just like breeding this weird. If I ever like accidentally get caught up in like the, the TikTok side of Instagram, like the reels. I'm just like, I watch like two and I'm always just like, this sucks. <laughs> I, I, I have literally t- like, like I've started TikTok, I don't know, like a year ago or something. And I'll put my um, time lapses from. That's what I'll do. Like I'll post. Yeah. Pretty much only time, like in animations and stuff like I'll, I'll use it to try and share. Yeah. 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 And one of those, um, but I would always end up putting it on TikTok and then sharing it on Instagram. So then it's got the TikTok logo on it and everything. I, a lot too. I see that where I'm always just like, <laughs> but I mean, I sometimes yeah. do the opposite. I'll post my Instagram reels on TikTok pretty often. Cause like <laughs> the thing that sings to me about the reels too is like, they've it's another thing that i have to i feel responsible to do everyone told me they're like you got to make reels you it's the new how you get views and i'm like i already am doing all this stuff now i have to make it a video and put words <laughs> over it and like make it funny and catch like ugh, it's like what do you do you're about? already doing all of that though you're already making videos and making it's it true. funny <laughs> well so- that's what helps with the animations are nice because i just post them but sometimes like i'll post like I don't even know, like a beat or like uh, uh, something else where like I feel obligated to like explain it more. And it's like just so much added stuff to make. But I do like um, I do like making like commercials and things that are goofy. Like I love making little short videos. I've always liked that. But yeah, it just seems hard to I don't know. Everyone's doing it. It's like it seems hard to make anything get my TikToks all have like 200 views. <laughs> I'm just like, how does, I'm trying a little bit. I'm not trying as much as a lot of people, but I'm trying a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, as far as your work, like where do you see like um, your animation and stuff going? Do you see like doing long, longer form animations or? I would love like to. That? I would love to do longer. It's funny because the more that I make animations, now all my Instagram ads are like animator schools and <laughs> stuff like that, which is the worst. But because I, they suck me in sometimes too. I like click it and then I'm getting WhatsApp messages like five times a day about <laughs> you didn't finish filling out your form. Like I just clicked it for fun. But, <laughs> like, I would love. It's hard to say because I really have been making so many animations like i've always wanted to and loved animation but procreate really opened that door for me where i was using adobe animate for like a week before and i made some stuff but like really quickly i was like okay this is like really in depth this is a lot to learn and then procreate came where i was like this is what i wanted like more of an old school frame by frame style Mm -hmm. and but now i feel like I've kind of hit a sweet spot of like a good 15 seconds or so is like a few hours of work. But Mm -hmm. if I want to make a longer one, 
that's when like like I have some ideas where I'm like that just seems too hard for me like to make some of these ideas within this way that I'm animating so like like we were saying before like if they fix some of those bugs or like I don't even it's not even a bug but if they like change that um where I could like have sort of an object and move it and like yeah. you know cuz it, it's pretty time consuming making like if I want to make someone wave, you know, I'm erasing their arm, drawing it again, erasing it, drawing it. And it's like, if I could actually just like click the arm and, you know, more of a vector style yeah. hybrid would really help me expand. But I don't know. I don't feel too limited. Like I, I think that what I'm capable of is also pretty aligned with what I like doing where like yeah. I get my points across usually. And like we were saying before, I mean, the limiting nature of my own skill set sort of helps in the sense of like, okay, if I can't do that idea yet, what can I do today that will still make me happy? Well, um, when you say that, like, um, I'm thinking immediately, and it's like my graphic design brain is thinking, um, like you should check out After Effects and character animation from adobe but it's like um with the character animation app you can take like a vector or a drawing and put it into this i haven't it looks complicated to me but i'm just you know i don't know if you know about this do you know about this about uh, adobe animate um character animation i i know that like i watched when i was using animate they sort of plugged it a lot where it was like is that what you would go through to sort of line up the facial? Uh, mm-hmm. Like you can talk. And you you move and yeah. your character moves. That would be awesome. That would be, I thought about that. Honestly, my computer is just like too weak, I think, at this point. Like <laughs> when I, A when, lot you know, of them are. <laughs> yeah, like I was using simple, I was making uh, animate videos and it was like nothing, like a water droplet running. And it was like, really slow and i was like okay if i wanted to really dive in i'd probably have to upgrade that pretty quickly yeah. but yeah i definitely would love to explore more of that i feel like once you set up a file like with your character in there mm-hmm. um like you do you have like specific characters that you're redrawing right in all of your work like once you set up a file of one of them it would be just a matter of you doing a new animation with that same file and resaving it because you could, you know, make them do something different each time. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah. I mean, I would love to, I, I plan on exploring more animation within my scope of like my yeah, yeah. without going too crazy and like without I don't know, yeah. trying to learn too much at once. I hear you. Cause I mean, like that's actually something that um, I have to deal with personally because I use a lot of after effects at work and so um i actually tried to look into the character animation thing and i got kind of overwhelmed and i was like you know i just need to back off and you know go back to what i was doing (laughs) because like getting stressed out like i can't figure out how it works but um I think, you know, what you're doing is great. And have you even thought about I mean I, I hate to even bring it up, but it's one of those things that just comes to mind, NFTs. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I sorta I have mixed views on them. I think that the concept is there and cool, but I personally, as far as my experience in the NFT space goes, I've I didn't love it being when I jumped in and it it just seems like a cool thing that was in my opinion kind of ruined from the get-go like I think like it became very what it is you know like the the most popular nfts are not based on their artistic integrity they're just sort of based on like clout and sort of commodities and chasing like rewards and things which I can't really stand behind too hard. Like I see some really great ones and I've made some, I, I, I got invited to a platform that's a little bit, it was a little more exclusive than like OpenSea is the the main one. I don't know how involved yeah. in the space you are. And so I, I got invited to foundation, which is by a friend of mine and it's like invite only. So I was like, okay, this exclusivity, yeah. maybe it a leg up. And so I, 
I minted like three things. Um, and I just realized quick, like, especially my style of art mm. isn't really what the NFT space is looking for a lot of the time. It seems very like generative, computer generative art, uh, like 3D, mm. way more 3D type of graphics. And then like, yeah, just like a little bit more, I don't know, refined or three dimensional or like, I don't know what the wording is, but like, it's not, I don't really see much like 2D cute, fun drawing stuff popping in the in, in really? space. I would love for it to, but yeah, I don't know. Quickly, I just sort of, I, I tried to jump in. I like followed all these Twitters and try to get advice. And it was just like, it costs a lot of money to even be involved. And then to make money, you basically I've hit a point of just being like, okay, I stepped out of it and I'd rather just grow brain mind and yeah. brain mind is big enough. Someone who's in into NFTs would hopefully just like want it because, because it's a brain mind drawing and they yeah. would own it. Like, I'd rather someone buy it for that because nowadays it's like the things that are selling are like collectibles. And mm-hmm. it's like, I made a really lame outline of a dude and I'm going <laughs> to, give him a different hat every time and those are all different collectibles and i'm like okay not not really fun or like creative it's just like which is i mean there's a lot to be said about like the community building it's doing i guess but i personally think nfts are gonna really if they haven't already it seems like they're already on the downward i think so too i think they're just kind of i read an interview with the the, there's two guys who like invented them. They made the technology to allow minting to happen on the blockchain. And they were just like painfully disappointed. They were like, this is not what we imagined. This is, this is ugly. And like, yeah. it's just game <laughs> to me. Yeah. To me, it's just an ugly space. It's just, it's become like dominated by the same forces that seem to rule the, from what I hear about like the fine art world in real life where it's like, it's not really based on art. It's based on weird, like money laundering and weird, like, I don't know, like some dude did not buy a picture of a monkey for 500 grand without there being some other stuff going on behind the scenes. Like, <laughs> there's there's a reason that they needed that money to be there. You know, it's like, it seems like a weird rich person space now where I don't, I don't know. I think there's hope though. I think like maybe it will, teeter out and then like real the art on there will start getting some recognition maybe yeah yeah I I kind of feel like yeah yeah I think you're you're right there I do however I thought that your work would do well on there but I do think it has to do with your connections outside of the NFT space so it's like people who already have like a million followers somewhere else are the ones where people are going on and like trying to buy their NFT or whatever. And so, yeah, which has kind of become my goal. Like I was saying, like, cause I feel like, yeah, if you have a million followers, a good 20,000 of them are going to be into NFTs. A good 5,000 of them are going to have enough Ethereum to like go buy your, like, it's just like going to happen yeah and, and and you're just applying worth you know like oh i have i have a million followers like i'm a big deal so like the exclusivity is already there and the, the demand seems to be there if i was like if i had a million followers i'd probably be like you know dropping an nft at midnight and i'm sure it would sell out in five yeah, seconds yeah yeah like, that's kind of become the goal of like i think i rushed into the space a little bit yeah thinking it was more art centric and then i really got a taste for it and i was like okay replan and just yeah. sort of build brain mine and they're in the back of my mind for sure and i have some friends that are really involved in the space that make great work and like really are killing it but yeah it seems like a little bit too niche for me at the moment to yeah. really put my eggs in there i think that's what happened probably with a lot of artists is that everybody rushed in at the same time and so yeah. then it became so watered down with so many people it's really difficult to even get seen or acknowledged at all because it's just yeah that's how i felt that's why i thought maybe being part of like the more exclusive platform would yeah help and then i was like really quickly i just saw like no nah, it's it's like saturated like that everywhere oh, yeah. like, and like i said yeah i don't know i think 
some of the real like it seemed like one of those things where you're gonna hear about this guy sold a drawing for five million dollars and <laughs> like oh i gotta get in on that <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's like i make drawings oh my god and so it's like who knows what was going on behind like those doors and so i think it's became one of those really quick where it's like a really seemingly way easy way to make tons of money but like those people already did it so now it's like everyone's already jumping in and it's like the the hype is kind of gone right once mm-hmm. once it's done you know yeah yeah absolutely well, i think i think you're on the right track there like building up brain mind on its own mm-hmm. and then people knowing brain mind will be like oh he's got nfts over here you know that would be yeah that's the goal that would be awesome because i would i think it's cool technology and i like I'm, i like the whole idea of like anything really crypto related where i'm like okay i see the positives in this i just hope it's handled well and yeah. actually i hope the positives are what make it to the finish line cuz <laughs> who knows i mean i don't know what i don't know enough to really speak on the logistics but it's just like whatever makes these things really pop off hopefully they don't like ruin it or change it along the way yeah yeah which seems to have happened a bit. Yeah, that seems, <laughs> that seems to be a reoccurring subject that we keep coming back to is that how everything just keeps going yeah. <laughs> downhill. It's just like greed, I guess, ruins everything in the in <laughs> some way where it's like things will be good, but then they want them to be too good. And it's like, mm. you could have made this great experience, but <laughs> you went too far. You went too yeah, far. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brody, for talking to me today. Um, sure. Where can people find your art? Art, biggest spot, like we mentioned, is Instagram at brainmind underscore studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, brainmindstudios.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are the two. I mean, look us up on Facebook, TikTok. I'm on there as brainmind studios, but. Instagram will point you to all these places. We've got the link yeah, yeah, yeah. in the description and everything. And you've got clothing and you've got these notebooks. What else did you have? Yeah, on our website, we're, we got clothing, uh, these beanies, a few hats and accessories. Uh, the notebooks are my personal favorite thing where they're like. Yeah, those are awesome. Half blind and half blind. Yeah. And they're really Pretty much just something that I saw once and uh, thought about ever since. Like I bought, I saw a notebook in China that was, I was in China and I got like this tiny thin notebook that was no name brand or anything, just half lined, half blank. Yeah. And I was like, this is amazing. I brought it home and I never drew in it because I was like, I don't want to even ruin it. Like, <laughs> so I love this thing. And so I finally was like, okay, this would be really cool. Because like I said before, like our whole mission statement is just helping people unlock their creativity and helping people realize that they are creative and that everyone is and has the capability to tap in. And so I wasn't providing anything that I think aligned with that until these notebooks were like, we have clothes. And I think like the pothead is kind of represents oh, yeah, yeah. the ideas pretty well visually, but I was like, we're not, I'm not giving anyone any tools to actually be creative. So now with this book, I'm really proud of them. And like, I think they came out great. Like designing it was really fun. Yeah. Sort of sampling through changing it. And like, that's definitely my, probably the thing I'm most excited about just because I'm like, it finally speaks to the real mission of Brain Mind. Yeah, that's awesome. But I do, I'm doing a few markets and I'm finally going to start selling paintings and stuff. So I'm, currently in the process of struggling to price them and things which i don't (laughs) understand how to do at all but i hope to sell paintings on the website soon enough too that'd be fun yeah that's awesome so you're talking about doing markets like um like setting up a booth yeah having originals there yeah so last summer so brain mind started in february of last year Mm. and then in march uh we moved from san diego to brooklyn and so it basically really was born once I got here and then right away just started going out to Long Island and doing sort of markets and vendor events and art sort of events and stuff. And it was 
just right away, I realized like that's where I really have a lot of fun and it's f- cool networking and meeting other creatives around and oh yeah, just that's like great. talking to people. I feel like Brain Mind is one of those things that does best when I can really like show it all at once. Like we have a nice table and it's like fully aestheticized and like I get to ex- talk to people and yeah. I just I like that environment a lot. I, I think I thrive there where like I get to meet people and explain what I'm doing. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really exciting. Um, so thank you so much for doing this. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Art Talk with April. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe.